Welcome to Animated Science Biology. Today we are looking at passive transport mechanisms of the plasma membrane. Uh, so previously we took a look um, at the plasma membrane structure. So if you have not seen that, please check that out. Uh, so passive transport mechanisms are transport of molecules across the plasma membrane using no energy. Okay, that's going to be a pretty uh, big distinction between active transport mechanisms, which are going to use energy, and we're going to check that out in the next video. Uh, so before we get started on the plasma membrane, we need to talk about a fundamental property of physics. Okay, so this property is diffusion. So all molecules are going to kind of obey this law. Uh, and what this law says is that particles are going to move from high concentration to low concentration. Okay, this, we could also say this, that particles are going to move from high energy to low energy. So we're talking about the same thing. So in this demonstration, we have a balloon inside of a box, and that balloon is going to burst. So the particles that are inside of the balloon are in high concentration, and when the balloon bursts, they move out into the rest of the box. So they are moving from high concentration to low concentration. So this essentially is the fusion. It's the same thing as if you took an aerosol can and you sprayed that aerosol can, those particles are going to diffuse from the high concentration to the low concentration. So once we get to the point where we have equal concentration in the entirety of the box, we can see that the particles are continually fluxing. Okay, They're not just um, in a state of, they're not static they're not uh, stable, they're continually fluxing, all right? And so that's any medium, any solid, or any liquid, uh, the particles are going to be fluxing. And that's going to give it its temperature, it's going to give it its energy. Um, so this flux property of physics is pretty important as well. And so when we go to our plasma membrane, we're going to see our molecules in a flux um, because we are at a small enough scale to actually see the molecules within the medium that are bouncing around. So now moving over to our plasma membrane, which is the barrier of the cell. Um, again, it's the amphipathic phospholipid bilayer. So one thing that we left off in the last video that we didn't talk about was the selectively permeable feature of the membrane. This means that it can choose what can pass through, with a few exceptions, of course. Uh, so the heads of each of these phospholipids are hydrophilic, while the tails are hydrophobic. Uh, so in our bilayer, we have this central zone, this yellow zone here, that's hydrophobic. And then this purple zone are the hydrophilic heads. And so again, hydrophilic means water-loving. Uh, the phosphate here is going to be characterized by polar bonds, while the hydrophobic means water-fearing, which means we have nonpolar bonds inside of this molecule. So when water, uh, when we put water into the picture here, uh, these molecules are impermeable to the membrane. That means they cannot pass through the membrane, okay? While oxygen, oxygen is a nonpolar covalent molecule, and we can see if we slow this down, they are going to be able to cross the membrane. So if we have a high concentration on the outside of the cell and a low concentration on the inside of the cell, they can use this property of simple diffusion, which is our first uh, mechanism of passive transport. So oxygen will continue to cross the membrane until we have an equal concentration on both sides, and then we'll have a flux, and these oxygen molecules will continue to flux back and forth. So now looking at another molecule, we have an ion. It is hydrophilic, okay? Ions are dissolvable in water, they are charged molecules, and they are going to be impermeable to the membrane because they are hydrophilic until we have a transport protein that is specific to the ion. So these transport proteins are called channels. So these channels are going to allow the ions to cross and use the principle of diffusion. Okay, So this is our second mechanism of passive transport. This is what we call facilitative diffusion, is using a protein. At something like glucose, glucose is a little bit different. Okay, so glucose is water soluble, which means it's hydrophilic. This also means it is impermeable 
until we have another protein called a carrier. Okay, So a carrier is going to function sort of like a channel, except it is going to have a specific binding site for the molecule in question. Uh, so we have a glucose carrier here. And the glucose is going to bind to its specific site. And it's going to initiate a conformational change in the protein. And it's going to kind of be like a revolving door. So as soon as the glucose binds here, the protein is going to open its gate and allow it to cross the membrane. So now you may be asking, well, how do we get water to transfer between the cells? Well, we have a protein called an aquaporin. Okay? And the movement of water is going to be specifically determined by the solutes on the inside and the outside of the cell, specifically the impermeable solutes. Okay, So if we have a high concentration of impermeable solutes on the outside of the cell, water is going to travel in the direction of the high impermeable solutes. Okay, So the extracellular fluid, which is the fluid on the outside of the cell, we would call this hypertonic. Okay, And so if we look at it on the bigger scale, again, if we have low concentration of impermeable solutes on the inside and a high concentration of impermeable solutes on the outside, water is going to travel in that direction and the cell can actually shrink and crenate. Okay? Now if we have the opposite, if we have a high concentration of impermeable solutes on the inside of the cell, water is going to travel in the direction of the inside of the cell. Right, so looking on the big scale here, we have the cell inside of a, um, a hypotonic solution, which means we have a low concentration on the outside of the cell. So hypotonic, low concentration. And the water is going to go into our cell. And that can cause the cell to swell, and it can even cause the cell to burst, which is called lysis. Now the movement of water that we saw in the last few clips, um, that entire process is referred to as osmosis. Uh, so sometimes we group that with facilitator diffusion because uh, it's a protein uh, that's assisting the movement of water. However, it moves by a little bit different properties uh, since it's not just moving because of itself and its, its own concentration. It's moving because of the impermeable solutes. We usually treat that as an independent process. Uh, so osmosis sometimes is grouped with facilitated diffusion. Sometimes we just call it osmosis. So looking at a review of all of this, because we went through a lot of that real quick. First, we talked about some membrane transport mechanisms. Mainly, we only talked about passive transport. Okay, So passive transport is no energy required. Okay, It's not going to utilize that energy. Active transport, we'll look at in the next video. And that's going to be energy required. So these are the two types of transport mechanisms. Specifically, in passive transport mechanisms, we have simple diffusion, which is where molecules can pass through the membrane with, with no assistance at all. They can just go right through the membrane. And we have facilitative diffusion. Okay, and that means that the molecules are going to need a protein to pass through the membrane. So with simple diffusion, the only molecules that can pass through without a protein are small nonpolar molecules, okay? Because they are hydrophobic. So hydrophobic mo molecules can pass through the membrane. So a couple of examples of this are oxygen. We took a look at oxygen in our video and some steroid hormones. So the steroid hormones, they can pass through um, unheated and without a protein. So on the facilitated diffusion side, uh, these molecules are going to be small polar molecules that are going to be moving by facilitated diffusion. Okay, So small polar molecules usually need a protein to cross the membrane. So a couple of examples we looked at, we looked at glucose. And so glucose um, is going to require a carrier protein. That is the protein that's kind of like the revolving door. And it had a conformational change. We looked at ions and it used an ion channel. And we looked at water um, through the process of osmosis. And it uses an aquaporin channel. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a like and subscribe if you want to watch more or if you're following along with your class. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I am new to the YouTube space, um, so I appreciate any con critique or constructive criticism that you guys may have. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching. You have a good one.